Okay, so you guys saw the video of the Cut Hub when I met with Dave, the owner of Cut Hub, and he kind of introduced me to the product, which I introduced to you guys. Now we're out here on site, and I had a lot of questions about, you know, it's not going to be very efficient, it's not going to be quick, uh, you're better off just making a table or whatever. Well, you just seen me bring it out of the trailer, now it's sitting here. Everybody's gonna have a different situation, whether you're backing your truck up to your job site, you've got a work trailer. So that really, that time that it takes to come out of the trailer to where you're gonna use it, it's kind of not really that important because no matter what, you're gonna have to do a different thing every time. Now I've got the three pieces. Remember, this is the Pro Edition, and I'm just gonna show you how quick it is to set up. I've done this twice, literally two times, this being the second. So I really only can say I've done it one time. So let's just get right into it. All you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the leg, push in a button, see you got this button right here, it's gonna push it in and it locks into the aluminum frame. So there, that's how easy it is to set one up. We're just gonna kinda set them and then we'll organize them later. Okay, so now that we have the three pieces set up, we gotta join them, and it's quite simple. If you look right here, we got a little button, and the inner rod, you push it, it's gonna pull out, you're gonna line it up with the one that you're attaching to, you're gonna find the hole. Then you're gonna come back over here, I don't know where it's at. There, once you get them started to set up, it does get a little bit easier. And look, I'm not on perfectly level ground. This is big, large gravel, so not the easiest of conditions. What's that? Okay, so there you go. Now it is set up, and you might be wondering, well, what if it's unlevel, what do you do? Let's take a look down the table itself. So you can see we're just a little bit off level. You can see right here, just by attaching it, it straightens it out. But you see how the leg, the leg is not on the ground. So you gotta adjust this, no big deal. There's these knobs right on the back. You loosen it, it will slide down, tighten it back up. Now it's sturdy. So you can go around, check all the legs, and make sure we got one here that's a little loose. Let me go get the miter saw. We'll put the miter saw and I'll show you how that works. Cordless miter saws, gotta love them. So you can see here on the bottom, you've got these little bit of a round little spots. Obviously that's pretty intuitive. That's where it's gonna go. And then when you actually fasten this, once you set this on the rod, you're gonna wanna make sure you push down. See that, you wanna push down, tighten this. What it's doing is it's securing underneath the curvature of this tube so it can't come back up. Now you have your saw set up and you're almost ready to cut, but the next thing you wanna do is you wanna zero in the stopper. And the stopper is the coolest thing that you haven't seen yet, so I'm gonna go grab that out of the trailer next. So this is one of the things that Dave tells me, the owner of Cut Hub, is his prize and joy, or pride and joy, I should say. And it is the thing that's gonna make you efficient and uh, what makes Cut Hub, I think, really special, above and beyond just a miter saw station. So this is the thing that you're gonna use to go on this station to once you zero out your saw, repetitious cuts, never pulling out a tape measure, you're just gonna move this. Once you've got this centered or zeroed off of the edge of your blade, now you can just move it to whatever measurement you're trying to cut. 
Lock it in, and now you're good. This is actually, I got this flipped around. I'll go into that next. This little thing right here is an additional piece that's for safety, and I'll show you exactly how you use that. But you get the concept. You're just gonna slide it wherever you want it to go. And if you wanna cut a bunch of 48 inch blocks, boom. 48 inches. So we're gonna set that up real quick. I'm gonna zero this in just so you can get an idea as to how it works. So I'm just gonna set this at 24 inches. Right now it's at 23 and a half. It's actually, it would be at 24. Here, we'll just do this. We'll take this off for now. So edge of blade, I'm at like 23 and seven eighths. So I just need to move the saw over an eighth of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen these guys. Remember, all of this stuff, it does take a couple minutes, but it's all the first time in the day. Once, once you've done this, it's set up for the whole day. So it's one of those delayed gratification, not instant gratification things. There, 24. So now, no matter what, we can check. Let's go to 48 inches. And if I check, I'm at 48 inches. So hopefully that makes sense as to why this is gonna be efficient for you. And let's say you want to cut longer lengths, you can get a different ruler that's gonna go in the table. So you can set it so that that one is, you can see it only goes to 84 inches. And then this one can pick up at whatever the dimension is. But my guess is you're probably, if you're gonna cut like us, a lot of 16 footers, I'm gonna go ahead and set the stopper at 16 foot with my tape measure one time, and then I know where it's at. So I'm gonna do that regardless. You don't have to worry or use this, but it's a nice feature to have so it's there all the time and it's never gonna change. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what this is. This is just an attached piece that you store with this guy, but you actually, attach it this way so that you can get into this unsafe zone. This for a safety thing, Dave tells me that he didn't engineer this so that it could go all the way into your you know, miter saw. Obviously that would be kind of unsafe. So this guy allows you to, let's say you want 10 inches, or sorry, I guess it only goes to about 12 and a half inches. You see the small numbers on the ruler? I can go 14 inches. So it's basically a 10 inch offset. So now I can butt my material right into this guy and get a 14 inch cut. So hopefully that makes sense what that's for. You're obviously not gonna use this anywhere past, it looks about like probably 30 inches. You're just gonna go ahead, or sorry, 20 inches. You're just gonna use it off of this guy. All right, so let's actually show you how the thing works. I'm gonna cut some window boxes up, which are kind of repetitious. I need some 51 inchers. I'm gonna lock this down at 51 inches. Got my material. Just gonna slide it. Slide it till I touch it. First one out of the gate, I'm gonna check every time, I don't care. 51 inches. Now we're at the point where this system is gonna start saving you time and making you money. I'm not gonna pull my tape measure out. I'm just gonna trust in this guy. Because it's so easy, I already know I need a 36 incher. So for my window box, I'm just gonna slide this real quick to 36. And this is what I really like about the Cut Hub, only using it one time is that 
16 foot lumber. It sits comfortable. It's not hanging off the end, flexing and making it hard to cut. It's actually very safe. So that's the thing that normally contractors don't care about safety. It's always obviously something we talk about, but we would rather buy a tool to make us money than to keep us safer. This one to me is gonna hopefully do both of those. I need one more, 51. So now we're gonna talk about something that a lot of contractors are very proud of, and that is their ability to cut a perfect line every time with a hand skill saw. It doesn't happen. I don't care how good you are, you're still gonna get some crappy cuts. With a miter saw, you're always gonna get as good of a cut as your miter saw has been set up. So all of these boards that I just cut in a matter of minutes are not only efficiently cut and accurate and consistent to each other every time, but they're all cut with perfect ends that you know you're just not going to get from a circular saw this to me is what really the cut hub is all about being able to accurately safely cut two by six 16 footers which is what we use for almost all of our structures <laughs> Nice. Now, one of the major disadvantages of the cut hub versus cutting off of a lumber pile is that everything is right there. You're literally just pulling your tape, marking, and you're cutting everything right there. But for us, we still have to move the pile of lumber by hand. We're gonna cut it, we're gonna put it into our piles. So really all I'm doing is I'm I'm skipping the steps of pulling my tape measure, marking it, putting a square line on it, cutting it, then sliding it to a different pile. Like I'm just taking it, I'm bringing it over to the cut hub, lining it up. So I'm kind of just changing how I move my lumber, but the important thing is, that every time I cut one, I'm getting an accurate measurement with a nice clean end with very little effort. And the lowest man on the totem pole that doesn't have a lot of skill can do this exact job. <laughs> By the way, that Metabo HPT, uh, which used to be Hitachi, is no longer. Um, that thing's got some power for cordless. This is how you stay fit anyway, stay in shape. Can't be too easy. Anyone would do it. So we've cut uh, 40 boards. Let's just check the, let me just check my measurement. All right, it should go. So one thing I noticed is that when you want to slide these two uh, stands together, there's no real good way to lock it. There's some um, tightening bolts that kind of, due to pressure, they like lock in, uh, compress basically, but there's no like physical lock. I would like to see that because if I'm, and the reason I say this is because you can't set the measuring tool here at like, let's say eight foot. It's right in the middle of where these two come together from the saw, and I can't really move the miter saw enough to achieve eight foot. You gotta put the two together which then means if you're sliding your lumber and you hit the stopper hard enough, it can pull apart. So I wanna be honest with you guys, um, you know, I'm not just all rainbows, unicorns, and all that good stuff. Uh, this could be improved. I would like to see maybe if there was a little bit of a, of a mechanical lock that locked these two together. I could be missing something, so maybe I'll talk to Cut Hub and see what they come up with, but 
where all these little knobs go to lock it, there's not one that actually locks it together. Yeah, just something, something to note. I mean, I don't think it's a deal breaker, but I think for a premium tool, it should have that, and that's probably a great um, version 2.0. So there you go. Obviously the disassembly process is as important as putting it up in the morning and how much time it takes. I think that's pretty simple. It really doesn't take much. It's a couple slides of the uh, aluminum rails folded up and this is the box it gets shipped in. That's the box you can store it in. I went ahead and just we screwed it all together. We got the mounting bracket here for the, the saw. That just sits there and holds it nice and steady. If you really wanted to cut in your trailer you kind of have a nice miter station here too. So there you go.